ha solicitado y ha fungido como asesor en temas de uso y aprovechamiento de software libre para los gobiernos de China, Malasia y Brasil, así como para las Naciones Unidas. Les pido un fuerte aplauso para Matos, por favor. I'm here to talk to you for about one hour and 15 minutes, and there is virtually impossible for me to tell you everything in that period of time about this software, so I hope you understand it. In this talk, sometimes I use the word IT, which stands for information technology, and the word it, which is a pronoun in the English language interchangeably. And I do that um, kind of humorously, I hope. So I hope that you understand that also. I have been in the computer industry for 39 years. I have worked on very large computers and very small computers. I've been using Unix since 1977, and almost exclusively Linux since 1994. I've been a programmer. I've been a systems administrator. I've been a product manager and a technical marketing manager. But most importantly, I have been both a customer and a vendor of software. And so I know what it is to be both sides. We need to talk about the economics of mass production. Because today, closed source software is mass produced software. In mass production, you try and meet a lot of the needs of most of the people. You try and design your product to meet a lot, maybe 70 or 80 percent of the needs of the marketplace. To try and meet all the needs would be astronomically expensive. And then you say, well, I can't meet all of the marketplaces so perhaps I will aim for 70 to 80% of that market. When you multiply those two numbers together, you find out that you're meeting less than half of the needs of the people in the marketplace. I call mass production software today a commodity product. It's a commodity product the same way that a can of corn in the store is a commodity product. And when you go to the store to choose between the different types and varieties of corn, you spend just a very small period of time because there isn't much difference between one can of corn and the other can of corn. If you spend more than two or three seconds trying to choose between them, you're wasting your time. On the other hand, a coffee cup can also be thought of as a commodity item. It is something which holds coffee. It has a handle on it, typically. And you can buy it in your local store for perhaps 50 cents or a dollar. On the other hand, there are tailor-made coffee cups. You go to a potterer. You say, I want a coffee cup that will hold a lot of coffee. It has to fit my hand. I wanted a particular color. And I want you to put my name on it. And that coffee cup is made especially for your needs. It is unique to you. You manage that you're going to pay a lot of money for it because you're paying for the potterer's time and expertise to make that coffee cup fit your hand. But you treasure that coffee cup because it's uniquely yours. In the close to 40 years I have been in the computer industry, I have never met a commodity problem. All the problems are different. All the problems are unique. Don't worry, who can go back on that? They can't. Please. The other a topic I want to talk about along those lines is that a lot of people feel that all the software written today is closed source proprietary product software. In reality, 60 to 80% of all of the software written today 
is not written by a large company that manufactures the software. It is written by systems administrators. It is written by programmers for unique companies that are writing that software. Perhaps they're in manufacturing, or perhaps they're in health. And they are the ones writing 60 to 80 percent of all of the software written today. Now, a lot of times I'll come to a conference like this, I'll be speaking to business people, and there may be a thousand business people in the room. And I'll say, who has ever had a problem with closed source proprietary software? And of course, a lot of the salespeople, a lot of business people raise their hands. Maybe 999 out of the 1,000 will raise their hands. And the last one doesn't raise their hand because they're asleep. <laughs> and then I say, how many of you have ever turned in a problem report on that software? And now about three quarters of the hand will stay raised because they're business people and they expected their software to work. And when it didn't, they turned in a problem report. And then I'll ask the question, who has gotten back a good workaround or bug fix for that problem? And now most of the hands will go down to the room. In fact, one time I did it and only 10 hands were raised in a room of a thousand people. And I said, Mr. Gates, you don't count. <laughs> and I'll ask a final question, I'll say, how many of you have ever had to change the way you do business because the software that you have doesn't work the way you want to? And now most of the hands will go up in the room again. This is the problem 